My name is Jordan Bain, and this podcast is called Unveiling. My guest today is Ruthie Odom, and Ruthie and I met back in 2014, in the spring, summer of 2014, and you know we've worked together now for the last six years, and she's a colleague of mine in the mystery school. So part of our intent with this podcast is to talk about the mysteries, talk about life and death and love and magic and healing and spirituality and also world events, uh, philosophies, understandings of life, and to really be able to share a whole range of topics with a whole, whole lot of different guests. So it's an honor to have Ruthie here today. Um, she's also now a certified guide in modern mystery school, like myself. And I just want to learn more about you, Ruthie, in terms of, you know, what, when you first found this work, what it was like for you, um, what it's been like progressing with this work, and to start to explore, you know, what it's like to do, to do this for really your, your living and your, your career in the world. So, and, and you're, you're relatively young in this work. So it's really cool to step into this um, at a young age and, and serve a lot of people. So thanks for coming on again. Sorry to our audience for all the technical difficulties and thanks for you being patient as well, Ruthie. So yeah, I'd love to hear you share about those things. Cool. Thank you, Jordan. Um, yeah, I found the Modern Mystery School when I was 20 years old. So I will be 27 on two days. It's really cool. Uh, I kind of took the fast track. I found, I found this work and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I want to do it all and just run with it. And I think it was challenging at the time because I think a lot of folks when they're 20 and in their early 20s, um, you know, we're thinking about things like, okay, what am I going to do? What's my career going to be? And, and we're getting this kind of standard education. Um, and you saw me even go through all that. You know, I, I studied theater in college and I even went to law school for a little bit. Um, and then I left uh, because I realized that wasn't actually aligned with how I wanted to help people in the world. So while, you know, a lot of my friends were getting this, you know, kind of more standard education, I felt like I was getting something very different. I was getting this metaphysical education. And the reason I wanted to do that was um, I really wanted a solid foundation in what it meant to offer goodness to the world and help people. Like, what did it actually mean to help people? I had this really pure desire of just helping folks. And I didn't really know what that meant because, you know, a lot of my past had been pretty challenging. And um, I'd seen a lot of darkness, I guess you could say in the world, but I was like, okay, well, if I want to help people, what does it really mean to help people? Um, because everybody has a different idea of what good is. And I wanted to figure out what that meant for myself. You know, so obviously I studied people in theater and went to law school and did all these different things, but it wasn't until I found the mystery school that I actually had tools to navigate, um, you know, just real service and real support. Uh, so this is just a couple of things that comes up for me when I think about, you know, my path so far and working as a guide and this being my career to be a spiritual guide for folks when I was 27 is like as, you know, a 27 year old is not something I anticipated if you asked me 10 years ago of what I'd be doing. But it makes perfect sense because I think that my understanding of what it means to be a guide is that you have walked a path and therefore you can kind of turn around and help people um, walk that path as well and navigate the pitfalls you made because you have wisdom on it so it's not like any like oh i'm some guru on the mountain here's all my sage wisdom it's more like hey um i did this and if this is where i fell and this is where i made mistakes and this is where i really excelled so here's how you could work the tools and the magic for you to get where you want to go because um it's always about where we want to go and 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 how well we know ourselves to weave real magic in our lives. And that's what I've always valued about the mystery school is just that it's such a personal journey. And it's, it's, it's all about you figuring out who you are to get all these things that you want. And I'm very lucky to have figured that out at such a young age, because I kind of got to bypass just a lot of suffering and a lot of feeling lost and confused to actually feeling really secure and really grounded. And Hey, this is my purpose this is what I'm going to do and make it happen. You just moved out to California. I did just move out to California. So I've uh, bebopped all over the United States. Uh, I'm in Huntington Beach, California now. Um, before that, I was in North Carolina. I still work in North Carolina. 
And then I was in Boston and Georgia and all kinds of places. But yeah, I just moved out of California. I love it out here. It is sunny all the time. So, and like, there's no bugs or anything like in SoCal I found either, which is great. Um, and people here are really cool. You know, there's lots of artists and there's just so many people. So there's a lots of amazing energy, just like of people's, like just everybody's thinking really big out here, which is what I like. Um, I love being in Southern California and be able to serve folks and, and offer the mystery school teachings here. Very cool. What, what do you feel when you first found this stuff? What, what like challenged you the most in your head? Like what, what either tripped you up or what, um, what made you wonder about yourself or your path or this work or, you know, that, that's something that, I feel like like early on in this work for me, I just came, I came from so many different backgrounds of understanding. You know, I, I was raised Christian and I spent a lot of time doing yoga and I spent time in new age philosophies and understandings. And I was a, a Reiki healer and, uh, you know, I've done a lot of meditation in different traditions, especially like Zen Buddhist meditation. So you know, for me, when I found the school, there were, there were things where I was like, oh, this, this really makes my life so much better and enhances every aspect of me. And yet there were, there were things that came forward for me, like questions in my mind, like, well, how does this thing that we teach in the school mesh with this other thing that I've learned? Or how does, how does, my, how does my life and how does this work fit together? You know, so I'm curious what, some of those things were for you and, and how you navigated, especially again, at a young age, you know, I found this when I was 25, you found it when you were 20. So what did that, what did that look like for you, especially the first couple of years? I think my biggest obstacle with this work was self doubt and self trust. Um, I think uh, maybe a lot of people feel the same, but I think that um, I had a, I really struggled with feeling sure of myself. It's interesting because I did theater and all these things and I, I had this sort of confidence of like talking to people and being more extroverted. But in reality, I think I, I spent so much of my life second guessing my choices. Is this the right thing? Is this the wrong thing? Is this real? Is this not real? And my biggest obstacle was just self doubt. Just like, oh, I don't know. I doubt myself. I doubt the magic. I can't trust myself. And so, you know, I'd be learning um, these teachings and learning and using these tools and, and, and trying to grasp these metaphysical concepts and just every step of the way kind of, it was an internal battle. And, and it, it took a lot of courage. Um, I think that actually trusting yourself and choosing what you think is right is some of the most courageous and one of the bravest things you could actually do um, because it, it's, it's touching on the fact that we're not just these stagnant, you know, or simple beings. Like people are really complex and we have different, emo we have complex emotions, we have complex feelings, we have different, like we have so many thoughts. How people think is different, you know? If I just like put myself in your mind, like I'd have, it'd be like trying to figure out how to drive a different spaceship because you're such an individual, unique person. And the reality was I live my, so much of my life going by how everybody else drove their spaceships and never getting the foundational training of how do I drive mine? Because my mind, my thoughts, how they weave into my reality is so different than everyone else because we're all individuals. And so always, always trying to take everybody else's user manuals and ingest it to try to figure out, oh, this is the right thing. So when I started on this path, it was about, okay, oh my God, here's my user manual. Like I'm actually gonna read it. And I had to sort of deprogram and declog myself of all this extra stuff that had told me that my, you know, initial reactions or, you know, how I, how I perceived the world was wrong and having to be like, oh, wait a minute, this is right. So it was a completely, complete rewriting of my, of my awareness, so to speak, and how, just how I saw things. It was like a total, yeah, software update, so to speak. Mm. Um, and it took a lot of bravery because, uh, it, you know, sometimes doing anything new takes so much bravery and courage. But when it's this internal process that you're in and, and you don't know how to communicate with other people, it's not like 
I'm going to climb this mountain and it's really high. And then people can see that and they're like, oh man, that's so brave. Look at you go. That's awesome. Or I'm going to skydive. It's not this physical act. It's this very internal process. And it takes like, you know, folks that are either walking the path or have this sort of nuanced emotional intelligence to understand how much effort you're putting in to being that courageous and being the hero of your own life to really know what it means to follow that, just follow your heart. But what does that actually mean? How do you measure that success for yourself? I don't really have negative thoughts in the same way that I did when I was 20. You know, I, you know, I did lots of drugs and I tried to sort of stifle a lot of the things that I was feeling. I used to be really emotional, uh, really empathic. Like I could feel everything that was going on. I felt like a Richter scale when I walked into a room, like just picking up on everything and then trying to help everybody all at the same time. So now I just actually have this sort of internal confidence that exudes in everything I do. I'm way more relaxed. I, I just don't have negative thoughts like I used to. Like I mostly, most of my thought capacity is spent on what am I gonna do today? What am I gonna create today? Um, what are my dreams? What are my goals? Or you know, meditating. So I don't have a lot of that negative chatter that is so commonplace in my brain anymore. So that's a huge measure of success. And then as a result, I have a lot more joy in everything that I do. Um, so that thoughts. was a, huh? You're looking at your thoughts and you're yeah. looking at, at your, your sense of joy and, mm -hmm. and what, with that joy and with those, those thoughts that you have, like how do you, how do you experience the, the world differently now? From when I was 20? Yeah, or, you know, just in the last six years. Yeah, like what, yeah. how do you, that, that when, I'm, when I'm asking about like, how do you measure that success? So it's in thoughts and it's in joy and, and mm -hmm. probably in other things that you're gonna share. Um, but like, how do you personally evaluate that? How do you, like, did you have to, did you have to look back at some point? Did you, I'm, I'm just curious about your process with that. Cause I, I yeah. feel like that's such a big question for, for so many people and you're far sure. along you're far along in this work like this podcast we're going to interview lots of different people some of them might have only been initiated six months but you've been initiated six years mm -hmm. so yeah mind. um i worked a lot with my higher self you know in, in empower thyself we received that the meditation sanctuary meditation mm -hmm. and i when i first started the path i used that like every single day because I felt that this con like this concept of like this this higher self, this being, this me at the highest, that was a really sort of revelatory thing for me when I got initiated and empower thyself. It was like, whoa, there is this sort of accomplished, amazing light being that is me. And that 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 was kind of like this whole it was a seed it was a seed that was being planted it was like wait a minute i've been sort of like playing really low and my thoughts have been reflecting that but then all of a sudden i got this meditation where i directly got to access my higher self and that higher wisdom uh, of me so immediately i started using that that tool like every day and just it's kind of hard to say but it was like yeah i definitely had to look back because every day i'd sort of like get assignments and be like what am i going to do today what am i going to do today and work with her and and then every day things just start shifting more and more and more and so what over were those, the years what were some of those assignments like because you know i think maybe some people are listening are like assignments you got assignments. A, an assignment from your higher self what is this okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we speak a language that you know six years ago to you you would have been like what the are these people talking about no it's so, so good it's, part of this podcast is to be like what the are these people talking about totally so, that's why I'm okay. interrupting you and asking these questions. No, it's good. It's good. It's awesome. It's fun. Um, okay. You get a meditation. You learn how to talk to your higher self. Your higher self is that highest expression of you as God on the planet. And we learn oh, more about what that Simple like that. <laughs> <It's> simple. <laughs> you learn more about what that means and empower yourself. And like, you know, it's, it's just it's a truth. Like there is this version of you that is so amazing and wonderful and great. And why don't you connect to that? And so did you take that for granted right away. Huh? Not for granted. Did you take that as true right away? Yeah, immediately. Immediately. Okay. So 
that's this interesting thing that I'm curious about with you and success. Because as we're, as, as I'm listening to you and talking, I'm like, so Ruthie is using these tools for a lot of things, but she's using them for success. And then, well, what is success, right? And so we're, you're talking about connection with your higher self. And then some people listening to this podcast might be like, what's a higher self? Or do I have a higher self? Or is that even real? Or is there such a thing? So not that we need to answer all those questions tonight, because I don't think we can answer those questions for, for other people. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that you prove to yourself or you know for yourself. But it's yeah. interesting to me that you, you took that right away and said, you know, I'm going to treat this as though this is real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe that this is real. And, you know, that's something that I've seen over the years be actually relatively rare. Mm -hmm. And for the people who do take it seriously, they can take off in that spaceship right away. You know, if, yeah. if before they got initiated, they were walking or they were crawling or they were riding a bicycle, they can just get right into the spaceship and hit the warp drive button and start going. Um, so it's an interesting, you know, it's like psychologically people talk about resilience and, mm -hmm. and what it takes to be successful in life. And, you know, metaphysically speaking, treating something as though it's really real in our own internal experience that, that's a double-edged sword, but it can lead to great success. Yeah. The double-edged sword comes in if, um, you know, we treat something as really real and it's not really real. Mm -hmm. That's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. That can be a huge pitfall on anyone's spiritual path. So that's, it's an interesting thing with the mystery school to, to find it and then to decide to trust it and then to see those, uh, the consequences of that choice play themselves out in our life over, over a period of years, it's kind of, uh, it's one of the only things that maybe can prove were we right? Yeah. Did what, did I make the right choice? You know, it, and did I trust this? That's interesting. By the fruits, right. By the fruits you shall know. I mean, that, I think I, early on, I knew I was guinea, guinea pig picking myself, but I'll do a shout out to both my parents who were a big part of my programming, right? Like, cause you know, our life and our parents, like how we're being raised is how the software of our mind is being programmed. And I can say something really special about my parents is that they're both really freaking brave people. Mm. Like I, ha I grew up with parents that defied what people expected the of them in lots of ways. And were like, I'm just gonna try this. I'm just gonna go out and I'm just gonna do it. Mm. So I already had that script like in my you know, subconscious to like, oh, well then if to understand if something works, you must do it, you must act on it. And yeah. I had acted on lots, of, like you said, like acted on other traditions before I found the mystery school and just led me down more suffering. I wasn't actually getting this success that I wanted. And so when I found the mystery school and everything that all the results were positive and I really started using the tools, you know, I became a guide in three years after I got initiated and, and went down the path really quickly because I was getting such fast results. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's not this this work, it speeds up progression. It helps you accomplish things so much faster. And a part of that is because you're having like, you know, you're this relationship with your higher self. You're having this relationship with you as more maybe perfected than you could have ever imagined. And then just by developing that relationship, you can garner wisdom. It's like you hang out with somebody who's older than you and they've done all these things. You're going to learn how to do those things as well and then act on it so if you're if you're forming a relationship with this aspect of you that is benevolent that is powerful that is loving that is all the things you could ever need or want you're going to progress so much faster because you're going to have this amazing internal compass for how to navigate your reality day to day and you're gonna have a focal point and and a, this relationship that's supporting you no matter what no matter what. So even if you fall on your face, you're going to know exactly what to do to get back up. And that kind of structure is, is just, it's so rewarding. It's so yeah. beautiful. You know, that compass point. So yeah, higher self, my higher self. Every day, my, my assignments were about my life. You know, I think a lot of people, yeah. what I've noticed as a guide now is that people take their life for granted. They take every moment for granted. They think another Monday is just trivial. But the reality is, there's no such thing as Mondays. Like you're never gonna get another Monday back, but we've sort of tricked ourselves into thinking like, oh, the Mondays are this and this is this. No, there's just like, you're either present or you're not. And you're never gonna get that moment back. 
and your life is not trivial. Like you, if you have a certain thought about something, if you have emotions about something, that is the breadth of your experience. And therefore you can learn from it and you can use it to progress anything. And, and your higher self will back you up on that. If it's going to serve you and serve your progression and help you understand yourself more deeply and therefore be able to, you know, flow that success, then it's not trivial. It's also important. Yeah. And, and that has, that has a double-edged sword, right? Cause you know, then you might get into things like, you know, Oh, well, Oh, this is really important. And this is, is it, or is it, is it important? Is it drama? That kind of things we talked about as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what happens is when you form a relationship with your higher self, you're learning to discern what's me and what is the drama coming from my negative ego. That's sort of blocking my vision from myself. That's huge. I mean, if people had that training in high school, high school wouldn't even be high school, actually. It would just be <laughs> right. authenticity. It would be lovely. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think a lot, of, a lot of people's social interactions are, are really just based on what they think is expected of them mm -hmm. rather than what they can actually share, what they can actually contribute, actually showing up as themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this continues through our lives. I mean, it's more highlighted in in younger years when we have broader social circles mm -hmm. because the, the expectations are cast about through more people like when you're in school and you have your peer group and you have your class the classes that you're in you know then you have like all the way through college for some people uh you have a lot of people that you know and you have a lot of different types of relationships and interactions but then people get on later into life you know they, they leave school they graduate they move into uh you know the workforce or they move into relationships and their social circles get narrower and smaller, but more focused. And they, they start seeing themselves mirrored more. Um, and that, that mirroring effect means we often, um, you know, we, we struggle to, to find like, where's, where are my boundaries? Where's, where's my authentic expression? Who am I in this relationship? Who am I in this job? You know, and that ties back to what you're saying about it's another Monday morning. Like, is, is, is it another Monday morning? Yeah. And I love what you said, like Mondays don't exist. And another way of looking at that through the lens of like living a successful life is to me, Mondays are another day to be myself, be authentic, share the light, work with people, work with my consciousness. There's, there's so many things I can do that if I didn't have a client scheduler and I didn't have things on the calendar, I would have no clue that it was Monday because things don't work according to that rhythm. They work according to uh, so many factors. Yeah. We talk in the, in the mystery school about the matrix and the matrix, like we, we jokingly use that term because of the movies in the late 1990s called matrix, um, which are really good analogies for, for initiation and the path of initiation and the journey of an initiate going from being plugged into some sort of robotic computer program. That's more like a, a simulation or a hologram to unplugging from the programs, unplugging from the, um, the veils and the, the illusions of what we think is going on around us and what everyone else around us is also agreeing. Yeah, hey, you're going through the same illusion. Oh, me too. Yeah, this isn't an illusion, this is real. You know, and we're all, we're all in that relationship with each other in that matrix. So in the mystery school, we talk about unplugging, unplugging from the matrix. How do you do that? I mean, we do that through the path of initiation, but as we unplug, things that seemed uh, predetermined, like in our relationships, like, well, this is who I am and that's who that person is and this is how it's going to go, are, um, those start being called into question. And it takes a lot of that guidance from your higher self, from your intuition, to be able to go through and successfully, um, this, this word, this energy, you know, I'm probably going to do this a lot in these podcasts, but like things keep popping up for me and you know whatever you want to call that you can call it your guidance you can call it your intuition you can call it psychic abilities i have no idea but you know the purpose of this podcast is to be authentic and to be ourselves and be that on camera for the world so i'll say whatever psychically or guidance wise the word success keeps coming up as we're talking just for me psychically i'm just like hey mm -hmm. this somehow there's this like, key energy of what we're discussing here that's about being successful and like examining what that means. And, and I keep coming back to that as I hear you talking, like how is Ruthie successful? 
what does that mean for her to be successful? What does that mean for anyone doing this work to succeed? Succeed at what? Like, you, you know, you're talking about succeeding at your being yourself, mm -hmm. which is interesting because that's what we call, you know, the adept initiation is first, the first step on this path we call it the adept initiation. And to be adept at something is to be successful or to be good at it or be capable at it. So that's interesting that we call step one, basically being successful at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. I mean, and that's like, you asked me like what I wanted, you know, when I started this path was to really understand what it meant to be good, what it meant to help people. And what the mystery school helped me realize is that in order to really help people, in order to really offer goodness in the world, I actually had to like be myself. And, and what I realized is, you know, instead of having to change, it's like change that internal core of who I am when I go into space, I can actually just be me and then all my needs are met. And, and there's a balance, balancing act to everything we do in this, in this school, which I love too. It's about the moment and it's about being able to discern what is the unique combination of all these different beautiful aspects of myself do I need to bring forth right now to achieve my desire? You know, success, yeah, success tends to be equated to like maybe money or abundance or having all these things in place, which I do think is a part of success. If that is your goal and if that is your desire, I think um, I've been the most successful when I've achieved a goal. It doesn't matter what that goal is, but if that goal is, you know, um, if that goal is just a part of that, like, I don't know, it's like goals and desires and purpose, all these things, they, they really weave together for me. So I found that I become more successful every time I achieve another goal, no matter how, how big or small it is. So when I first started the path, a lot of that goal was like, okay, I want to get this healing or I want to go to the next class because I'm noticing all these positive things or I want to do Kabbalah, like the universal Kabbalah program. These goals were very it was just the path. It was like, okay, here's this step and I want to get there. How am I going to get there? And what I didn't realize then that I understand now and not really, you know, we don't have like, you know, we get initiated and I'm like, oh my God, I have all these tools. I'm starting on this path, but you don't have the experience yet to know where it's going to get you. You're just trusting your guide who's on the other side. He's like, yeah, I've been doing this. I can help. Yeah. Jordan is my guide. And so thank you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, what, I, what I'm now understanding about how important that part is of being an initiate, how important it is to, to actually be like, okay, I have this goal. I want to get this healing. How am I going to get them? How am I going to make it happen? How am I going to get the money? How am I going to make the time? How, how am I going to get all my life in order to make this desire happen? What I see is that that is part of creating the foundation of our magic. Because then it's like you, you accomplish one little thing like that because it doesn't matter like the money the time it doesn't matter it's about you accomplishing something that you want and what's cool is that there's so much you you there's so many options in the mystery schools of things you can do and then you 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 make that one little accomplishment you have the success wow i made it i did it i i got to go to healers academy i don't know how i did that like that's great i'm all the way in canada i've never been to can like toronto like i'm here i'm, I'm learning this next step or oh wow i just i i got this healing i really wanted it for a long time and and I made it happen and, and you get more, it's like a success and another success and another success. And you start strengthening your will, like mm -hmm. your willpower and the will to do good. Because to, I think to be really successful, you have to have a strong will because there's, there's really no such thing as failure if you never give up. And it's the willpower that's constantly pushing you to, to that, to that real success. And then all of a sudden I found that as I progressed in the path, my goals would get grander, they'd get bigger. It wasn't just about how do I make it to this class? It became like, how do I get into law school or how do I um, get a home for myself? How do I move to California? And now my dreams are so much bigger and I know that I will be successful in making them happen because I've had all this training in exercising my will and being courageous and following my heart, understanding my desires to make it happen. So that's, that's the real confidence. Yeah. That, yeah. Which I think is, is the key to success. Definitely. It's, 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 if it's not the key, it's definitely one of the big ones and it really helps us to, mm -hmm. you know, I think with confidence, we see ourselves better. 
real mm-hmm. confidence, not not fake confidence, because we're not talking yeah. about fake stuff on this show, anyways. It's not the purpose of the show. How to be fake? <laughs> yeah, hey, how to, like re- revealing, pull the veil down again, and just don't see yourself. <laughs> but when we when we talk about confidence, when we talk about success, and we talk about reality, you know, to to be successful, whatever it is, like what. What do you want to be successful at? Like you're saying, you, your goals have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So in this work, we're examining ourselves as the instrument to make this happen. And ourselves are also the results. Like we are, we are the result. We're the thing that makes it happen. You know, we, we call that magic in the mystery school to create something out of nothing and to turn something into something else. And we're the one who's creating ourselves. And we're creating that out of, often it seems like nothing and sometimes that we mean that in a joking way like wow how did i do that i don't even have any clue how i made that happen and then other times we we think we're coming from somewhere really solid and then we step into a deeper level of energy or a deeper level of initiation or kabbalah or something we realize we thought there was ground underneath our feet but there's not Mm -hmm. and you know how many times does that happen to people in life that's probably something that happens a good number of times in a person's life but as initiates we speed everything up and when things are sped up you learn a lot faster you learn to to see because there's things that you now you know you're turning 27 in a couple of days there's things at 27 that you've probably gone through and seen that a lot of people haven't seen by the time they're 60 just in terms of the energy then they've seen 60 year old has definitely seen more of life They've seen more like the different aspects and the ups and downs of life. But in terms of seeing themselves, you've probably at your level of initiation as a guide, you've probably seen more than most people by the end of their life or by the time they're 60 or 70 or 80 years old. And the cycles of learning accelerate so much that you can, you can see what works and you can see what doesn't work. You know, and you can look at, um, your choices. You can look at your choices and say, is this leading me where I really want to go? Is this going nowhere? A lot of people that I know have spent 20 years in a relationship that was kind of going nowhere. It's true. That's intense to realize when you're 45. That's intense to realize when your marriage blows out and you're 55. So, you know, there's something to all of this with success, confidence, talking with your higher self, getting the right information, not being a fake person, not trying to dig at anyone who might ever watch this video, but, but are we living authentic lives? Are we living real lives? Like, is my life mine? Is my life somebody else's life? Is my life the life my parents wanted me to live? Is my life... Uh, a life of how I look on the outside, how I look on paper. You know, so many companies hire people because of how they look on paper. And then like, what, like a, a half hour interview, a 15 minute interview. And then we go work in that job for years. And then we meet people and then we get married and then we grow old. I mean, what are we doing? What is that, the hell is that about? It's a good question. You no, know, I, I and when I was a kid, I would look at my parents, and I would talk to my dad in the morning. I would wake up early, and he would be reading the newspaper. He'd, re, he'd be reading about the stock market, and I was like, Dad, can you explain the stock market to me? And he was like, Well, people invest in these companies that they think are going to do well, and then they either make money or they lose money. And I was like they think they're going to do well. Like, yeah. Like, you know, you kind of, it's kind of like, and so I got into basically like, it's kind of like gambling. I was just like, well, what, well, why, why is our world set up that way? Why is our world set up to be like, and I asked these questions very young. I was like, well, dad, what if I don't want to gamble with my life? What if I want to create something that's just uniquely myself? 
you know, he didn't really have good answers to those questions at that time. She's like, well, that would be great, honey. I think that would be a great idea. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't think I can do that. I know I can do that. I'm going to find something that helps me do that. Mm -hmm. But how many kids grow up and are just like, well, I'm going to go do this thing now because I was told to do it. And do you even know why you were told to do it or who told you to do it? Who told you to do the thing that you're doing? Who told you to go work at that job? Who told you to go get married to that person? D did that come from you? Did it come from your family? Did it come from an expectation that you had? Were you trying to make someone happy? Even if you were trying to make yourself happy, did you know where to look? It's, it's yeah, a lot. I, I work with people you're... at all ages and it's, it's really good to find this work when you're young because then you don't build a bunch of BS. It just accelerates the process. It really yeah. accelerates the process, like you said. Um, like I, to be where I am at from a spiritual perspective, personally, I did not think I would get here until I was like 80 years old. And yeah. so when I achieved it, and I was like, oh, I've actually hit this sort of um, spiritual life, this like internal reality that I so wanted at the mm -hmm. age of 27 and not 60. Now it. it it's like you get to the top of the mountain and you see there's more mountain. Like it's a, whoa, there's way more, I can, way farther I can go. So when I'm actually 60, it's very exciting to think about what oh. I'll be doing. Um, but it does, it's not like I bypassed any of that learning. Like even what you said, like I, you know, I went to law school and I went for a year to realize that I went because of a programming, mm. you know? So it's like, instead of me going to law school, becoming a lawyer, doing all this stuff, not that that's inherently bad or I would, um, you know, tell people not to go to law school. It's just more like for me, I realized, oh, wait, I'm doing this because of, of, of just why, why am I doing, that's what I started asking. I'm like, wait, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because my family wanted me to do it? Am I doing this because I was just told to do it in some way, shape or form? And I recognized, okay, I chose it, but did I choose it? And when I left law school, I, I felt a, a really deep independence come in. Of like actually no i can i can really recreate my life in a different way and that yeah that was a really big moment for me leaving because um i just learned so much about myself i learned how how again that courage and that power i think um i think anytime someone makes a choice that is that is you know against the norm or like following you know something else they're actually trying to do it mm -hmm. because they think it's right it, it's just it's one of the most I don't know, admirable things I think I see. And you do more people a service when you make those hard choices because then you're giving other people permission to make the same choice yeah. without any, yeah, sort of negativity coming their way for it. And, um, you know, so it's like I learned these lessons, but I just learned them in a very much shorter amount of time than if I had done it and like lived my life and then like years down the line decided to go when it might have already been a bit calcified, so to speak. Yeah. But um, so it's not like you, you can't bypass life. That's what I've also learned doing this at a young age. Like you can't bypass these lessons. Yes, you can totally do them way faster and thus get more done and accomplish more, but you can't skip them. <laughs> if we try and skip them, the, the, the way that we work as initiates, the, life's gonna bring us back around. It's gonna bring okay. us back around to the same thing again and again, which of course happens for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you miss a lesson as a human or you try and skip it is a better way to say it. Life will always bring you the same lesson until you learn it. But as an initiate, we can actually learn it. We can actually get over it. We can actually be done with the lesson. And then we don't have to keep going through the lesson. And then, like you said, you get to the top of that mountain and there's more mountains to climb. And you get to see more of what's really like the, the lay of the land, what's really the territory that you need to move through in yourself. I mean, yeah. Like when I was, I think by the time I became a guide, I, f I feel there was this definitive moment in the first year after I became a guide. So this was 2011. I, I, it's like I was done in some way with all the lessons that my soul really wanted to learn in this life. And I was like, uh, I'm 31 years old. I'm done with my lessons. Okay. Um, what do I do now? Like, what, 
that no one told me this is going to happen. You know, I didn't think I'd be done at age 31 and I don't feel done. Like, Oh, I'm, I'm ready to leave the planet and die. I was just done with the lessons. Mm -hmm. And then being done with those lessons, uh, I could create something new because there was nothing else on my plate that I had to create. It was all optional after that. Yeah. And I mean, that's been true freedom for me. It's been nine years of true freedom. Like there's, it's so, you could call it karma, right? Like people, people talk about karma. They talk about, oh, you know, I have this karma. This thing keeps happening to me. Whether that's real or not, I'm not even trying to comment on right now. Whether, whether karma in the way most people understand it is, is really what's driving them or not, I, I don't really have an opinion on that because I think everyone's different. But for me, it was almost like I, I didn't have anything else pre-planned. There was nothing else in that bank account of lessons that needed to be delivered. From that point forward, it was optional. And that optionalness, if that's the word, optionalness, um, has meant total freedom since that time. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I don't know when anyone else hits that. Um, I don't know what that takes for anyone else. I can't say, oh, you know, it's, it's always at the same point in the person's progression because I have no idea. But I, I can say I hit that nine years ago and, and there's just been no, um, it's like every day I wake up and it's like, well, what do you want to create today, Jordan? Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's nothing I have to create. So it's, it's kind of reminds me of a, like when you get all your homework done, like you come home from school and then you finish it all. And then you're like, great. Now I have all this time to do everything I want to do. Like I want to go outside. I want to go play. And, and maybe that's just it. Maybe it's just like you, you actually see these things and then you just get to have fun. Yeah. Like that's, that's also a part of it too. It's just like, wow, like it's really like fun. Like having, like being in joy is something, you know, the word we use a lot. Like I have this internal joy and this peace with everything I'm doing, but also just fun. Like being yourself is really fun. It, it's like, there's less stress. You're not just navigating whatever everybody's opinions and what they're expecting of you. You just get to, oh. you just get to go. <laughs> like, right. it's just like, great. You know, it's like, what do I want to do today? I don't know. Like what sounds fun? Like, and, and, and like, there's just less pressure on life. It's just, it, it, mm -hmm. it's like life it is, it's a balance of, that reverence and the fun and play and that and that seriousness and the humor like there has to be both yeah and i think uh you know people have really lost touch of just having fun you know because maybe we're embarrassed or we're ashamed we're ashamed of ourselves so the things that we actually want to express become so challenging like we can't just go into a room and dance because we're worried what people think about us so we can't just go and say what's really on our mind we're afraid that maybe it's wrong it could be wrong but just like why not just say it and then learn you know by the repercussions it, it's just it, it's there's so much so much pressure on people to be these matrix robots so, sometimes yeah. that it becomes a lot more fun when you actually learn things get over it see your greatness and then do what you really want to do because you know it's coming from that greatness it's like yeah. you're graduating out of a bull <laughs> Speaking of which, what's what's next for you in California? Um, man, I I'm excited because I get to have so much fun, right? In Southern California, I I'm in this place of you know I just moved out here and I have a lot of transitions going on, but I'm now uh, currently working and selling uh, residential solar uh, as one of my gigs here in Southern California, which I love and actually helping folks get solar panels on their homes so they can start to own their energy and be more independent. Um, I am like working around town and meeting people and just having fun meeting the community. I'm teaching empower thyself. I'm helping people on this path to begin this path. And my biggest dream here right now is to help build a healing center and build a modern mystery school center in Southern California for more people to access this work. And then I dream of like getting back into film and television like because that was a part of my life as well. I've been having dreams of going into comedy. I've been having dreams of writing again. So, I, you know, it's fun because I get to be at this place where I'm having a lot of fun. You know, we're not limited. Like I don't feel limited by being a guide in the mystery school in any sort of way. I feel like actually it's just a platform to do as many things as I want to do. 
Mm -hmm. I can do something that's going to help the planet and I can do something that's going to jumpstart my creativity and I can go out and be in the world and just be myself. And, and that's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I can go and build this healing center to then help people help teach people how they can do this for themselves and just be free because that's the real freedom to be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and having a structure to figuring that out too, because I think that, um, there has to be a discipline as well to get to that, what the self is. Cause like sometimes seeing a blank sheet of paper is the hardest thing. You're like, ah, and what's beautiful about the path and the path of initiation is it's just a structure to help you come more and more and more to yourself to where you can be comfortable living as limitless. Cause now it's like, okay, we have this limitless potential, but we were not really uncomfortable with it because we don't know how to navigate it. And we don't know what that means. And so you start to work on these different pieces one at a time and the foundation expands and you start seeing more and more and more until one day maybe you are comfortable living as limitless potential all the time. That um, is definitely what it's all about. Yeah. We're, we're like right at the end of our time. We're actually almost running over here. So okay. yeah, amazing. Thank you. This for is really fun. Thank you for yeah. having me on, Jordan. Thanks for, for sharing everything you're sharing and these reflections and just showing up spontaneously. You know, we, we talked yesterday and both tuned in with, well, what should we talk about? And we got, yeah, just talk about anything. We we're like, really? Just anything? Like no topic, really? Yeah, just talk about anything. So thanks for coming on and talking about anything. It was so fun. Thanks for having me. Sharing, sharing your fun and all the stuff that you're doing in California. Um, yeah, it's an honor. And I had fun chatting with you. So I appreciate it. Cool. Well, we'll talk later. Thanks for everyone who tuned in. Sorry about all our technical difficulties. I'm going to try and figure out Facebook for next week. Otherwise, I guess we'll show up on YouTube again if we can't figure out Facebook for next week. So love you all. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye. Bye.